All right, welcome everybody. This is What's Up For You. And um, before we go anywhere else, let's start in the heart, okay? So um, if you'll just close your eyes for a second. And let's just start breathing into that heart space. The energy's kind of been up and down and all over again. So taking that nice deep breath, 360 degrees right into the center of the heart. And exhaling that energy out 360 degrees, really giving yourself some space, some awareness. And let's go ahead and breathe in that nice deep, deep breath right into the center of the heart again. 360 degrees, it's like you're pulling all aspects of yourself into the heart space. And then exhaling that energy back out 360 degrees. And today we're gonna keep this energy just for ourselves. We're not gonna leak it out anywhere else. So one more deep inhale, 360 degrees, all the different aspects of you coming right into that single point in the center of the heart. And then exhaling out and being broadcast out from you so that all of you is here, all of you is available, all of you is held in love and compassion and appreciation. All right, there we go. And when you're ready, we can just open our eyes. All right, so whew, let me just say before we get started, <clears throat> the last probably 72 hours again, I don't know about your worlds, but I know in my world it was, you know, kind of um, big ups and downs again. And, um, you know, lots of emotion, lots of energy kind of flooding through the field. And when I was really sitting with it, I, um, Sharon and I had a long conversation yesterday and she was uh, the receiver of my tears yesterday, which was really lovely to have somebody uh, to witness that. So what, what I really was sitting with um, yesterday was this energy around, you know, we hear this all the time about putting ourselves first and really being able to care for ourselves and asking ourselves what we need. And there are some days where we can, we can kind of back off of that and say, oh, I've got the energy to take care of this person or that person or support in this way. And there are other days where we just don't have it. And I think that we've been so used to conditioning ourselves to pushing through almost like we're supposed to have it or we should be able to do it. So just keep pushing or just keep moving. And we're getting to a time in our own um, integration processes where we're integrating such vast aspects of our being. We're not, we're not talking about early childhood experiences. We're not even talking about just simply um, other lifetime experiences that we're attempting to integrate. We're really attempting right now to integrate the totality of our being, all that we are, all that we have been, all that we ever will be. That's all, that's what's trying to um, find a landing pad, if you will, within each and every one of us. And so it's so important to to really not get caught up in this idea that somehow you have to push through. That's an old masculine kind of energy, right? It's, it really comes from um, a patriarchal reality that was a doing reality, basically. And here we are becoming, we're being. 
And that state of being is more important to collective human evolution than any doing that we might um, that what th that we might attempt, right? Because it and it is an attempt because we know we can only get so far and then we kind of hit that wall. Um, and so anyway, I just wanted to start today with that because I want to invite everybody to really pay attention to the the languaging in their head you know when we're attempting to justify the push you know what what words are coming to us number one whose voices are those but number two you know how are we languaging that a lot of times if we listen to our words we're going to hear a very masculine energy you know, get it done. Let's go. We can push through, make it happen. You know, all, you know, it's, um, you know, I, I'm supposed to be able to do this, that, or the other thing, whatever those energies are, just hear them for what they are. <clears throat> and, and let's invite ourselves to a much softer, gentler, um, kinder, uh, response. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, so it this is this is what's right here and available. And um, I can tell you uh, wholeheartedly that I'm having to practice this myself. So <laughs> I'm not telling you guys anything that um, I haven't been uh, addressing myself and honestly never really do tell you anything that I haven't been addressing myself. So anyway, all right. So uh, do you have questions, Sharon? Anything in the? Yes. This first question is, how best to clear deep unconscious beliefs we hold in our bodies that encumber our soul's mission? Mm. Yeah, such a great question. And it's, it's a simpler answer than you think. It's be kind to yourself. Be kind to that part of yourself. It goes hand in hand with what we were just speaking about. This idea that, that, on the one hand, this idea that we should be anywhere else other than where we currently are, you know, I, I don't see, um, it's like fighting with what is, and every time we fight with what is, we lose, <laughs> because that's what is, right? Um, but when we can acknowledge that this is where we are, we're in this um, we're seeing these patterns, we're understanding that we'd like to move forward and we just can't do it, or it's not time yet, or who knows what other um, reasons there might be. But what we do know is in that moment that we can just, instead of turning on ourselves and beating ourselves up, we can turn into ourselves literally turn into ourselves, turn into the biggest parts of ourselves that we are, and just tune into that, tune into those places that are struggling and offer them love, you know, offer them compassion. You know, these are different aspects of ourselves that are all just trying to get on the same page so that we can mm, maybe not do something specific, but live our lives fully, yeah? And um, yeah, tuning in. And so let's, I mean, let's just do that right here, right now. Every single one of us has a place within us that we're rubbing up against right now. And so, so let's just hear the voice of the one that is, um, overwhelmed or the one that would like to push forward that can't or the one that mm, the one that can sometimes believe that the mission is the identity right instead of the essence of being as the identity right so, and it doesn't mean that we don't accomplish amazing things in this world just by being ourselves, but first the essence, second the mission, 
Yeah, so let's go back to those places within ourselves. It's almost like we're turning around and looking at them. And instead of looking at them with frustration and ir irritation and sometimes even disdain, <laughs> not getting it fast enough or quick enough, right? Let's just look at them with empathy, with love. It's nothing in the world that can be pushed, especially now. Um, and yet everything can be altered when we're gentle, when we're loving, when we're kind. And that's not just to everybody else, but it's to these different parts of ourselves as well. It's so, so important. I'm awake most nights from around 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. using all my stress relieving techniques. Any advice or insights, please? Yep, um, sit up and tune in. Um, so, um, and I know sometimes at that hour of the night, it's not the easiest thing to do. Um, so um, in, kind of Ayurvedic medicine and or um, kind of Eastern philosophies, the, that two, especially that two to three hour, uh, two, uh, 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. hour is really potent uh, energetically. It's, it's, you might say it's a, a portal or a passageway to the broader parts of yourself. So count yourself lucky, number one, if you are being woken up at that time, um, because it's almost like that bigger part of yourself kind of knocking on the door and saying, hey, you know, this is a great time to, to really interface and connect. So if you can sit up and just close your eyes and go inward, even if it's just for 10 minutes, you'll probably find that you drift right back off to sleep again. Um, and or you'll be getting so much information during that time that you'll be too excited to go back to sleep. <laughs> so either way it works. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was, uh, um, I was uh, having that experience as well. And long time ago, and it almost feels like a different lifetime, I was in a Gnostic Orthodox monastery for five years. Um, and learning from them and they used to make us wake up between um, you know that two and four time frame we had to meditate between two and four every day so um, and so that was and that was the reason but um, we don't have to go to those lengths anymore and um, yeah count yourself lucky <laughs> it's a it's a little bit of a wake up call <laughs> yeah portal yeah my grandson arrived last night, 10 weeks early. Our new baby's coming in early these days. I sense he is very excited to be here. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Um, they're coming in, um, they're coming in early. They're coming in awake. They're coming in aware. Um, it's like, as challenging as this time feels right now, it's, it is kind of the greatest show on, in the universe. I was going to say on earth, but it's beyond that. So um, yeah, you've got a lot of souls really coming in. The other side of that is it's just, it's also just not babies being born into this reality, but it's also parts of us are being born into this reality that have never been able to be born into this reality before. So if we use the metaphor of a new child coming into the world and getting here, you know, 10 weeks early and being so enthusiastic about landing, it's like that's kind of where each and every one of us was when we got here as well. You know, that kind of got uh, squashed, <laughs> you know, over time. But the fact is, is that we're returning to that part of ourselves that's so excited to be here as well. And um, it doesn't always feel like that when we're returning to it because we're burning through all kinds of energy that 
um, would have told us differently. But um, yeah, just like brand new babies getting here, we're, we, different aspects of ourselves are getting here right now too. Um, so, yeah. All right, this one says, could you explore releasing inherent energies? I'm in, in my processing, I ran into hopelessness that I got was more that, more just the soup I came into, or maybe it's part, part of the totality of our being. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, well, both and, you know, it's like part of who we are is what we came into, right? Part of what we are is what we got conditioned to. And also part of what we are is that which neutralizes that conditioning. Yep. So we're both and. It's never, ever an either or. You know, it's um, this whole idea that we can you know, I even, even say that it's separate anymore. We just, we just can't. So, but the thing is, is if we're feeling it, so, and the more sensitive you become and the more embodied you become, the more you're going to notice the nuances of your lineage, you know, your heritage, the collective consciousness of whatever's going on out there, you know, the more, um, attuned you become to all of these different places but <clears throat> if we consider that it's not something that's separate from us and we we pay attention to it again with love and with compassion and with and with and with like we turn and we look at it and we face it a lot of times like i know um when i've been doing lineage work and lots of it <laughs> lots of lineage work over the years, what I would notice is I was always coming to the lineage work from a place of either a place of fear or a place of anger or a place of frustration or, you know, it's almost like that's the part of me that I don't want. You know, that's the part of me that's not supporting the vastness of my being. Well, that's not exactly true. That part of us is supporting the vastness of our being. That's the part of us that, um, the part of us that got imprinted or the lineage patterns that we uh, hold, you know, are the ones that are the, it's the same energy that kind of gives us the drive to want something beyond that, right? So everything is working for us. Everything is working for us. So my first question would be, when we look at those, any patterns that are coming in, are we looking at them from a place of fear or are we looking at them from a place of love? And if, if our minds say, you know, well, I can't love that part or that part doesn't belong to me, then I would, I would reconsider that, you know, again, because we don't get to see the love that we actually are. We don't get to see the vastness of our being unless we turn around and look at something as the love that we are, as the vastness of our being, right? So, so I would simply invite those patterns in, if they're already coming in, invite them in, and then also invite yourself to get as big as you possibly need to be in order to envelop that energy, in order to, to mm, allow it to be one with, yeah? What you actually are. You, I mean, I honestly, the vastness, <laughs> just in this little conversation right here, the sheer vastness of being and the, the, the sheer interconnectedness, the, the capacity to, mm, Honestly, just about anything can be neutralized from that vantage point. We're just not used to stepping into that vantage point because we're conditioned day in, day out by whatever's out in the world to pay attention to our smallness, to pay attention to where we're divided instead of pay attention to where we're unified. Yeah, so, and it takes some, takes some uh, practice, yeah. 
but not as much as you think. You tap into it over and over again, and all of a sudden, that's the target that you go to. That's the place that you go to in order to address anything. And it gets really simple from that point on. Yeah. Yeah. Can you say more about how you see the gold frequency evolving in society, in kiddos, and in each of us? So um, those gold frequencies, to me anyway, those gold frequencies represent our, I'm going to say our, our totality, um, our wholeness. I would say it's a, uh, it's the next iteration. So when we use that blue star in the center of our uh, heart space, or when, when we spin information um, out using that blue star, that is also a representation of our wholeness. This gold frequency energy seems to represent the next iteration of that on a more collective level, right? So that blue star that we put in, it's almost like each individual that does that and recognizes the totality of their own being helps to facilitate this gold frequency energy that is um, being, um, it's not even interfaced, it's, it's coming to life within the collective, I guess is the best way to say it. And so, you know, so a couple different things are happening. So you have new children being born who already hold those gold frequencies and can bring those gold frequencies with them because they're coming into an environment now that where we all have started to create a soup for that, create a, a landing pad for that, right? So you've got all of these kids coming in who are holding up that higher frequency, that gold frequency. And, and we are as well, we kind of grew into it, they're coming with it, but either way, it's one and the same. And it's also true that, that these gold frequencies, just like that blue star, there's these gold frequencies that are, um, have been deeply, deeply buried within our DNA, within our cellular memory, um, within the, the lifeblood and life force of our being. And so what you're going to notice is that as you're more identified, let's say, with the, I'm going to say the frequency of love, when you're more identified with the totality of your own being, when you're going there to address anything that you need to address on any given day, that gold frequency is building and building and building within you. And then just by just by interacting with others, just by having these kinds of conversations or meeting the people that you meet on a daily basis, you are activating that within them. Yeah, it's, this, is, this is energetic. It's, it, you don't have to say a thing to somebody, but if, you're, if that gold frequency structure within you, if let's say the clarity or the purity or the... Hmm, totality of your own being is rising within you, you are naturally and organically going to help that rise within somebody else. So a lot of times, especially right now, there's so much separation energy and there's so much conflict energy. Everybody has, you know, an idea of, you know, the rights and the wrongs of the world and all this other kind of stuff. And Quite honestly, that piece of it really doesn't, uh, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that we could stand in front of somebody, anybody, hear what they had to say, knowing that we're, we are holding these frequencies, noting, note, knowing that we don't have to make them believe what we believe. We don't have to, uh, help them see the light, you know, or those kinds of things, you know, and quite frankly, you know, who knows if what we believe is true either, 
you know, it's like these are these are perceptions and there's a deeper one. There's a deeper perception. There's a totality um, that is taking place now on this planet like never before. This is what is actually causing the transformation that we're all experiencing. So, so what happens if we can stand in front of somebody and listen to what they have to say and feel all the places in us that kind of get you know, angst out when we're like something is said that just doesn't really resonate with what we might choose for ourselves, right? But as, if we can, in those moments as we're feeling all that, if that feeling can be an indication that we're right back in, let's just, let's use that as an opportunity anchor back into the totality of our being. Let me tell you, some aspect of the totality of your being is going to help raise up that individual to theirs. And it's not our job what theirs is, right? It's not our job um, to figure that out. It's, that's the bigger picture's job. <laughs> so, I feel emotional pain from a close relationship that has ended ended and is a barrier to me fully stepping into the totality of who I am. How can I release this pain that is connected to unworthiness? First, um, how, could, um, how could any of us be unworthy? And I know that, you know, again, a lot of times when we talk about unworthiness, we talk about ourselves being unworthy, like we're the ones that are less than and therefore we're unworthy, right? But again, if we go, if we move out of separation and we move into unity, if we move into collect collective, would you say that the, that the whole of humanity is unworthy? Right, we wouldn't, we wouldn't say that, you know, we see people all the time that our minds believe are more worthy than we are, right? But I, I, there's, a, there's a fallacy here in this idea of worthiness, unworthiness. This is, a, this is a mental construct that again, got programmed into the, got programmed into the identity. And I know, it, you know, you can say when you're feeling unworthy, it can feel like, you know, it's easier said than done to just drop it. Yeah. And so I'm not going to ask you to just drop it, but I am going to ask that you, if you were to, again, slip back into your totality for a moment, you might say that there are aspects of you that feel unworthy, but if you even asked the totality of your own being, are you unworthy? Right? Are you actually, are you unworthy? I mean, if you ask the question to the part that can actually give you a supportive answer, which is the totality of your own being, my guess is, is that you know, the answer would be no, you, you know, that you, that you are worthy. And then if we expand that out to every single soul on this planet, whether we see them as worthy or not, right? Whether we see them in that light or not, if we were to ask their totality from the totality's point of view, are they worthy? They're worthy too. Right? We're, we're here, you know, we're worthy of this experience because if we weren't, believe me, something much bigger than us would be taking us out. <laughs> you know? It's like, this is where we are. So, um, so let's, let's have that peace first. And then the other side of that, again, is when we look at relationships, it's like, I know it's like, it's, um, who, um, there's such a tricky there's such a tricky experience because there's wrapped up with deep love and connection and almost a, 
a filling up of self through relationships of any kind. There's also this, um, there's also this energy of there always being this, hold on a second, this probability that that relationship will change or end or hurt us. You know, it's like if you're looking at this just from the place of that, that human heart that really feels and loves so deeply and saw a part of ourselves in the relationships that we've held. And not only that, but those relationships um, served as a really beautiful reminder to ourselves for at least a period of time of either what we needed to look at within ourselves and or you know the what we actually were the beauty that we actually were and more often than not i'd say 99.9 .9 of the time when a relationship ends as as challenging as that is to the human heart and as kind as we need to be to ourselves through that process that relationship has ended either because you have integrated the part of yourself that was represented by that individual, right? Um, or it's for some other reason, um, it's simply not required anymore. Maybe they fulfilled, maybe they learned from you what they needed to learn from you and it was time to leave. More often than not, when that, that energy separates, it, it hurts, right? I mean, how could it not hurt? Whether it's a, you know, a longtime partner or a friend, or even right now when it's people that are making choices that, you know, people that you love and they're making choices that you feel might hurt them or harm them. And, you know, the, the human heart is really going through it right now. It's, you know, it's going through it. So, but again, if we can just consider that, that every separation is a reflection of something that has changed internally for each one of us, that every single person in our reality is, let's say, a, a part or an aspect of our totality. They're a reflection of that, right? Um, I used to have a woman in my life a long time ago that, um, I, and I used to, it's like I, I had a conflict in our relationship and it would go back and forth, back and forth. And I finally, one day I just wrote down, this is what this person represents to me. She represents somebody who is maybe in fear. She's, there's a lot of fear there. There's, it's somebody who feels to me you know, kind of like they're in need of me on a pretty regular basis. Maybe even that there's some taking of my energy or something like that in that dynamic and in that relationship. And I had written that down and, um, and I just start going to work on myself. It's like, okay, where am I pulling other people's energy? Where am I in need? of something that I don't think that I can find within myself. You know, where am I in fear of what may or may not happen? And as I started working on that internally, she called me one day and she said, <clears throat> I can't be your friend anymore. And, and she, it was very direct, very, she had a whole reason why she couldn't be my friend anymore, why we couldn't interact anymore. And because I had done, because I'd done it that way, it was, okay, that's all right, that sounds great. I want you to go and do whatever you need to go do next and w let that go. So, and in that, so in that scenario, it was like I was aware of what she represented to me. I was aware of what I had to work through myself because of it, and then she disappeared, right? So 
is that always the case? Believe me, no. <laughs> the, the closer it gets to the heart, you know, the more that you're deeply in love with this person or that person, or they represent something to you that you really like about yourself. You know, maybe it's somebody who shows up and is just vibrant and alive and amazing. And you're like, wow, I want to be that person, you know, and then all of a sudden they disappear, right? So either way, you've either integrated that energy, well, either way, you've integrated that energy, whether it's a positive one or a negative reflection, once they disappear. And if we really can start to see it like that, we can also give people, um, we, we, can, we can really appreciate the role that they've played for us. Yeah, and that we've played for them. You know, it's, um, there is no out there out there, you know, it's like I say it over and over again, but there are all these beautiful reflections. And I think a really good exercise is to take the key people in your life, take the people that you interact with on a regular basis <clears throat> and write down how you would identify them, whether that's glowing, amazing, wonderful person in your life, or somebody that's just, <laughs> just rubbing you the wrong way day in and day out, write them, write them all down. First, thank them for playing the role that they're playing for you. And then two, recognize that those same <clears throat> energies are inside of you, right? So the beauty and the brilliance and that person, oh, she's amazing or he's amazing, right? That's you, <laughs> you got it. And the one that's like rubbing you the wrong way, again, we can turn in and we can say, wow, that's inside of me too. You know, that's, ins and we also have this ability to open up to the totality and say, okay, how do we hold this? How do, how do we love this? Yeah. So the question is, is the book Dying to Be Me by Anita M M Morjani has found its way into my life. It explores a near-death experience. It has been very helpful to me in finding my center and being in my sacred, sacred heart in absolute unconditional love. I can touch unconditional love for myself and to others in my micro universe. Is unconditional love in the macro universe possible? Just looking for an exploration of unconditional love. I'll tell you what I heard. <clears throat> I heard unconditional love is possible if you're willing to bring it, if you're willing to be it, which clearly you are, right? Clearly you're, you know, anything is possible. Anything can come into being provided we're willing to be it. Right. And the very fact that you've got this book and it's speaking to you and you're and you're able to <clears throat> you're able to offer that, you know, to yourself, you're able to offer that unconditional love um, to these various parts and aspects of your own being. It can't help but bring it here. It can't help but make it possible. And if you know that you've got that piece. If you, if you know that that book is resonating and that you're applying it in your own life and it's grounding into your own human reality and you're addressing yourself in that way, you know that it's going to start broadcasting out and you're going to start addressing others in that way as well. And when you start seeing that happen, all you need to do is to grow that, all you, it, to intend to grow that, to expand it. Now you're putting your in, attention and your intention into the same thing. You know, there's not a question, you know that that unconditional love has started to anchor and you've seen it have an impact in your own life and in the life of those around you. You've seen that authentic um, expression of loving for the sake of loving, not loving for the sake of getting, right? And as that starts to happen, you start intending that that grow. 
I intend that that grow in this world. I intend that that grow um, through this universe. I, I intend, right? You're, you're now adding energy to that which you've brought into creation. And there's no way that unconditional love can't exist here. Yep. So one thing that, okay. So the, there, here's a little caveat. So the caveat is that, that unconditional love is just that. It's unconditional, right? So as you create that in this reality, you're going to find that people are going to step into that offer because they want it, they choose it, and there are other people who are not going to step into that offer because they don't choose it and they don't want it, right? That's the unconditional part. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're creating an environment, you're creating a soup for them to step into. Yep. Whether they step into it or not is completely up to them. And the ones that do step into it, wonderful, beautiful, enjoy them. And the ones that don't step into it, wonderful, beautiful, enjoy them. Yeah. I have two questions going back to the gold frequencies. And this one says, uh, let's see. In other words, does the gold frequency grow in us naturally as time passes? Mm -hmm. And then the other one says, connecting to our own gold frequencies, does it help decrease disease and increase healing? <clears throat> so yes and yes. Um, so... Yes and no and yes. So, so let's do it this way. So the gold frequencies are naturally uh, increasing and occurring within you. And they are naturally increasing and occurring within you because you're choosing them. Yep. So it's kind of both and. So um, it's like... You know, they're just, there are just expressions of reality, uh, vast expressions of reality that are so far beyond our mind's comprehension as to, you know, the sense when we think we have control over something, <laughs> you know, that we're, when we're talking about gold frequencies and the laying in of new evolutionary structures, on the one hand, to think that we are in somehow in control of that, I, I doubt it. You know, it's like, I, I think that that's a lot bigger than any of us are. And when we become aware of these frequencies or experiences, number one, we're already aligned with it. And number two, as we choose it, then we help that evolution go that much quicker. Right? So both and. And then the second yes to your question is, is around the healing properties of that gold frequency. So as you're clarifying and purifying and coming into the state of your own totality, of the vastness of your own being, as you are capable of um, meeting whatever arises from that, let's say that frequency of love, not Valentine's Day love, but the frequency of love, then what you're gonna notice is that your body will absolutely spontaneously start to heal, repair, um, you know, um, I, I, yeah, I used to watch this for years, like six years in a row, I think it was like at the end of the year, I would be really, really not feeling very well at all. I mean, something was off. A few times people told me, ah, no, something's really off, you know? And so that would happen October, November, December. 
as you know, as we were closing out that year, as new energies were coming in, as old energies were leaving, that's where the challenge would be, let's say in the body. And then January, February, March would come in and by about March, then whatever that was, was gone, right? So whether, we're, whether we are infusing the gold frequencies into our field and knocking out denser frequencies um, or whether we're, uh, whether we're bringing in the next iteration of ourselves and knocking out the, the iteration that has held that at bay for a while. Each time there is, if you notice, you know, you'll always notice that we'll have these big flushes of, of maybe energy that come up and out followed by deeper states of being and or deeper states of being followed by this big flushing out of energy, right? So, um, so that's, I mean, it's as simple as that in many ways, kind of that's the way it works. And so you can't help but evolve your physicality, you know, psychology, biology, neurology, they're all upgrading with these frequencies. And as they do, you can't help but change the dynamics of those fields. Yeah. We'll do this as the last question, just because we have about 10 minutes. Uh, can you speak to the potential effect of doing too much energy work on the body? Is there a typical amount of time that the body needs to rest in order to integrate a new aspect or the release of an aspect before embarking on another session? And can too much energy work cause headaches? Yes, yes, and yes. Um, and I just learned this myself over the last couple of weeks. So, um, oh God, yes. Um, so we're getting to the place now in our own evolution where we're understanding that we are energy first. So any energetic uh, expression, anything that, uh, anything that is an interface of energy, which is just about everything, um, absolutely has an impact in your field, right? And so first, let's be really clear that whatever uh, energy um, work that you are participating in, that you invite it to be in the highest and best interest for your totality, right? For the highest and best interest of who you are. Because what I've noticed in, in myself and in you know, a lot of others as well is we have a tendency to seek out energy work when we're feeling kind of, eh, you know, like when, when things are kind of off or we think that something's quote unquote wrong with us, that's when we have a tendency to seek out the energy work. And so, but when something feels a little off, right, then again, it's, you know, are we perceiving that part of ourselves as wrong or broken or, and can we turn that energy in and, and support it and comfort it first? Because a lot of times that will start to help to dissipate things. The other thing is when you set the intention to do any kind of energy work in a way that's in the highest and best interest for you, for all involved even, what you'll, what you'll notice is that that energy work will um, shift things around in such a way that, that it's, um, there's a lot more ease and grace in your process. If we're coming to the energy work from a place of fear, right, then very often, depending on who you're working with and or depending on how much you've piled on to that particular issue, then you have a tendency to both get the, the awareness of what the issue might be, but the issue doesn't go anywhere, right? Because we've, we've kind of gone into it with fear, yeah? So, um, so first we wanna understand where are we going 
you know, why are we engaging in the energy work in the first place? If it is out of fear, which nine times out of 10, it will be, then first, before we ever go into that other experience, whatever that field of energy is, let's just be, let's just address it ourselves. Let's bring our totality to it. And then we might make the choice to be in, um, to put ourselves in another energetic field, especially an energetic field that feels like it would heighten our own, right? That's really the only thing that's happening with an energetic healing anyway. It's like two fields come together and one field bumps the other one up. Somebody's aware of something in that space. Somebody neutralizes something in that space. And to the degree that the individual can hold that energy is the degree to which that healing, right, perpetuates itself without that person that was perceived as the healer, right? So this is the very, this is more important than I actually understood when I first started <laughs> streaming this. But the, what I really want to say here is that it's so important. Are you going out of fear? And if you are, before you do anything, inside, bring your totality to it. Yep. And then once you bring your totality to it and you have kind of raised your own frequency, then by all means, go and get some insight or go and see um, if that's a match, someone, you know, somewhere. If, if that's helpful, then by all means do that because then, then you're going to lock in at that frequency. It's much more likely that you're going to sustain it after the fact because you came to the energy work in love, right? Instead of in fear. Fear is always going to give you the other side. How many times have you gone to somebody and you had, it's like an amazing experience and you hold it and it's all, oh, it feels so good. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, ah, oh, I got the other side of it. Yeah. If we go in as separate, then we have to have both. If we go in as total, or at least as total as we can be in that moment, it's more likely that we'll come out of it total, <laughs> feeling whole. Yeah. So, um, and so to answer your question too about too much energy work, yes, if we've got all kinds of different fields going on, um, then Again, it's, it's just, you'll, you'll know because your body will shut you down. Um, mine does that to me all the time. So your body will shut you down. The other thing I will say is one of the healing modalities that we forget the most is grounding, is nature, is good old mother earth. You know, we, we have a tendency to... Um, to forget that altogether. But when you think about it, this is where we are. We are on planet earth and we're streaming all kinds of different dimensional energies. We are aware of things that, you know, even we ourselves might not typically think that we could be aware of. And so there's all kinds of information streaming through. But that information is streaming through in, uh, in relationship to being on this planet, right, at this time. So let's use nature. Let's use grounding. Let's use something that simple. Let's use some decent food going into our bodies. Let's use, um, yeah, laughter. Let's use something like that to just help ground out some of these energies that are trying to work their way through. So, yeah. Yeah, that's helpful. All right. Okay. Are we, how are we? Sharon, we done? We are. We are done. Okay. All right. Let me see if there's anything else to say before we go here. Yeah, so 
this, this totality of you, this vastness of you, it's already there. You know, it's like you're, nobody has to get you there. Nobody, it's already there. We just simply have to choose it. And we need to choose it. And we need to choose it. And we need to choose it. And so, and just like anything else that you choose over and over again, it literally becomes and is reflected or a reflection of what you are, right? So we just want to choose it. And when things get complicated and when we're trying to figure out other realities and other dimensions and other lifetimes and childhood experiences and all of that, it's, it's, these are all beautiful parts of the whole and they're beautiful parts of the whole. So, so let's bring them to the whole. Let's, let's address it from the whole. Yeah. Yeah. So, not that I get a kid in my home. I can't get a kid in my home. Can't get a kid in my home. Yeah, it's, you all are anchoring this. You all are the presence of your own totality. And within the field of that totality is so much information. It's information that you uniquely have brought to this reality. And when we understand that, when we actually go, if we're gonna go look for something, we go looking for that within ourselves, we find it. And as we find it, there's no question as to whether or not we are worthy. There's no question to whether or not we are a contribution to this human experience, right? It, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you can, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. The contribution is the energy, the frequency, the, the essence of your being. That's, that's the contribution. That, con that essence being here is the contribution. What you do with that and what is a normal and natural outpouring of that is just icing on the cake, you know? It's just a way of expressing what's true, what's, what's you, yeah? All right, I hope that's helpful. Thank you guys so much. Lots of love, have a great week. Bye everybody.